Professor George Depp Cole, World Lead Primatologist Director of Primate Research Center at Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. Professor Cole, um, how can we even investigate uh, cognitive abilities among um, other species? Uh, we cannot ask them what they think, how they feel, and we cannot really know what's going on in their minds. Yeah, what, what we do is we, we set up them with problems. We set them up with a situation in which they want to get something and then we vary the conditions and depending on their responses then we can make inferences about the type of cognition that they possess. Okay, so how human mind differs from other species mind? Uh, let's say chimpanzees or bonobos, which cognitive abilities uh, which we possess um, do not have other species? I mean, there are uh, different aspects. I think that there are some differences that are I think um, qualitative differences and others are quantitative mm -hmm. differences. I mean, qualitative differences, I would say, for instance, humans are very motivated to share uh, mental states, to share our experiences with others. So I think that is one thing that, that is different. Um, now, in terms of the, the similarities, I mean, there are some aspects of our um, mentalizing abilities that I think that we share with other, uh, with other species. But uh, like you know, we can infer what other individuals can and cannot see. Yeah. But there are other aspects of these abilities, like the false belief attribution. That I think that, uh, as far as as far as we can tell, there is no empirical evidence. Mm -hmm that shows that they are capable of false belief attribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for example, ability to deceive. Yeah. Uh, can I deceive? Yes, they can. But, uh, but then uh, one question that we ask is what is the cognitive mechanism underlying mm -hmm. it? Because you can, uh, the response of deceiving, you can achieve it in different ways. And it depends on the cognitive mm -hmm. mechanism underlying. For instance, I, can, I, I could have learned that every time I move in one direction, you go mm -hmm. on that direction. Without and then uh, I want you to go in that direction. So I make like I'm going to go in that direction, mm -hmm. but I don't. So I could be deceiving you, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily need to input any mental states to you. I simply know what your behavior, mm -hmm. what you will do. And mm -hmm. it's deception, but it's what um, um, White and Byrne call tactical deception, not necessarily deception having to do with creating a false belief. Mm -hmm. Could you describe a few situations when various individuals show their unusual uh, cognitive abilities? So you're, are you asking me, you would like to know things that we've been surprised about uh, observing? For example. I mean, uh, one, one aspect is, I mean, this is now a few years, but a few years ago, there was very little evidence uh, that, um, say, uh, apes or, or primates were able to attribute mental mm -hmm. states to others. And now we know that at least for some mental states, there is pretty good evidence suggesting that that's the case. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that, um, as I say, 20, 15 years ago, we mm -hmm. did not anticipate. Okay, uh, what about uh, language abilities among non-human I, I don't think, obviously, I don't think that non-humans have language, but mm -hmm. what they have is some, some components of mm -hmm. what uh, humans... Language consists of. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's... I mean, see, uh, studying, studying um, non-human animals has the, uh, it's, it's, it's got like two goals. One goal is to simply to know more about those species, mm -hmm. but another goal is to try to reconstruct cognitive evolution. And in this sense, we can see what are the things that uh, may have been common with the uh, ancestor of humans and other species and what things may maybe derive traits, something that have only appeared during the evolution of, of the hominid uh, line. Okay, fr so from the phylogenetic point of view, which came first, uh, theory of mind or language? I think theory of mind. Okay, um, maybe the last question. Are there, any, are, are there any limits of scientific explanation, do you think? Mm -hmm. Are you asking me, are there things we can, that science yes, cannot yes, get to? Yes, yes of course, yes. Uh, science what, what has kind, limitations. What kind of things? Uh, for instance, things that have to do with subjectivity, things mm -hmm. that, I mean, the subjective experience of individuals, mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't have language and they, commun they don't communicate about those experiences, mm -hmm. we just don't have empirical tools to get access to those and therefore we cannot study them. That does not mean that they don't have them. They may have them, it's just, mm -hmm. we, well, they, I mean, science, those aspects of a given species are outside of reach of science. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. You're welcome, thank you.